Landscape Photography World, the podcast for everyone passionate about landscape photography. I'm Grant Swinburne and I'll be your host on this show, talking to landscape photographers about their motivations, creative processes, likes and dislikes. This time I'm talking to Dale Gribble about his work and motivations, along with a range of other topics I hope you'll find interesting. Dale is a photographer based on the central coast of New South Wales, with a passion for showing places that don't usually get shot. He does this in different ways and giving people the curiosity to look up at the sky and into the natural environment. A keen adventurer, Dale looks to explore the world around him with gusto and create beautiful art from his treks into the forests, mountains and beaches around the central coast of New South Wales. His stunning scenes display his love for the landscape and getting to places less trafficked than others. We discuss his love of capturing places that are hard to get to and how his background in graphic design has shaped some of his workflow. We also touch on how photography has been a way for him to help his mental health and be a better human along with much more. I hope you enjoy the show. G'day, Dar. Welcome to Landscape Photography World. How are you going? Yeah, not too bad. It's good to be here. Oh, that's the way. Uh, very happy you said yes. I've uh, been following your stuff for a little while and uh, very, very happy to have you on board and, you know, very interested to find out a lot more about how you do what you do. So why don't you start with, um, you know, telling people a, a bit about yourself and uh, how you got started in photography? Yeah, sure. Yep. So um, from the Central Coast, um, nice, nice little place here. In terms of uh, getting started with photography, um, uh, my parent, but my parents weren't really kind of creative or anything like that. And I had a, um, a great grandmother who taught me how to um, paint and kind of helped kind of sow that seed of creativity when I was young. Yeah. Um, so that that just kind of filtered through. I never really got into uh, photography until, you know, three, four years ago, you know, I'd, I'd picked up a camera and stuff like that, but I'd never kind of done anything interesting with it other than, you know, taking photos of family and, and, and stuff like that. Sure, sure. And because, because of where I'm located, um, it's kind of, you know, it, it was easy for me to just go to the beach and, you know, that's, that's when I kind of got into seascapes and started having fun. Yeah. Okay. So what, uh what is it about i mean obviously it's it's close at hand so where you live obviously influenced uh what you shot um how much do you think that's really you know made a difference to the way you shoot and and how you how you motivate yourself to get out um i'd I'd say it's probably you know it's it's probably the motivation for, for for getting up for you know for sunrise and stuff like that you know You'd, you'd have to be crazy otherwise to, to get up that early and, <laughs> and try and shoot stuff. I, I did, I did used to, um, cause b being near the coast, you know, yeah. my, my dad and grandfather and stuff, they, they all surfed and stuff. So I kind of got into the habit of getting up early then, um, yeah. which was nice, helpful. Um, and then, yeah, instead of surfing, I went and started taking photos. Yeah. Cool. So are you doing it full time or are you just doing it as a, as a hobby still? No, at, at the moment it's, it, it's still a hobby. I'm just trying to kind of work out what I want to do. Um, you know, my yeah. day jobs as a, a graphic designer. So I've, I've, I've still got that, that kind of creative side of things, um, which is, which, which is nice. And in photography is definitely a different aspect. Um, yeah. Okay. To that. Yeah. Do, you, do you think the your graphic design background is uh, sort of plays into how you edit and how you uh, see the world, or are you trying to um, you know keep things very real? Um, yeah, no, it, it definitely it definitely allowed me to to well for, for for one just to be exposed to the programs. You know, when I was at TAFE learning all that yeah. stuff, you know, one of the components is um, stuff like Photoshop. Um, not that I did photography with it, but I was familiar with it. It wasn't as scary, um, as, as it can sometimes be. So yeah, I, I think it's good Learn, learning stuff like, um, composition and, and, and that helps, helps a lot. Cause I think it's kind of the thing that kind of defines whether or not a photo is going to be good or yeah. not. 
it's it's kind of that starting point. If 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 that's not there, if you don't have that in your in your head um, when you're shooting, then um, it's, it's not. It, it doesn't mess a shot up, but um, it can kind of take it to. It can it take it to another level. Yeah. 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 And and composition is definitely one of those you know th- those abstract things that you get told you know it's so important but mm-hmm. you can't articulate it until <laughs> yeah yeah it's 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 just like this 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 illusion of 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 goodness like this is good because of the composition and yeah. you know learning how to break that down I think is uh, an important part and and that's definitely that's that's definitely stuff that's kind of learning graphic design and stuffs help help me. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that that's where you come at it from looking at, you know, the balance and looking at, you know, things like golden ratio and, and so forth, which, you know, obviously when you're, you're learning graphic design and so forth, you get, uh, you started to get a, a little bit soaked with. Um, yeah. Did, did you, in, in learning that, did you get into things like uh, colour theory and so forth? Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, yeah. You def, definitely got color theory. It's it's kind of it's 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 hard to 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 pull color theory into um, something like landscape photography though, because you yeah, know, color theory for graphic design is you know when are you going to get these weird colors together in 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 real life? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that that was that was definitely definitely a learning curve. I, I remember. Um, a couple of year, years ago, there's, there's this really, really great blog, blog article by, um, uh, who was it? Ted Gore. Yeah. And he's, um, he just breaks down color theory. And it's the first time that I ever saw color theory applied to landscape photography, not in a abstract, you know, these colors go well together, but in yeah. a, hey, yeah. look at this. This yeah. is it actually working. This is why it does work. Yeah, this is why it works. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's that's the important thing, and that's that's the key to unlocking that sort of thing in, uh, you know, in in photography is is understanding why it works and why it doesn't. You know, when 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 not when to apply it, when not to apply it, but also you know when when it's not working, how to how to fix things. Yeah, for sure. You can't just point point you know point at a sky and. And and that's it. There's definitely a lot a lot of tweaking at different levels that kind of makes it work. Yeah. So talk to me a bit about how you go about planning for a, a sunrise session, or you know, um, are, are you getting are you going further afield, or do you kind of restrict yourself to the the central coast area? And um, yeah, I've, I've pretty much been restricting myself to the central coast area, whether that be. Um, out of necessity in terms of like lockdowns <laughs> like yeah. lo- at end of I mean, last year and the year before yeah yeah thing. um uh but yeah I'm, I'm starting to i'm starting to go kind of uh further afield not because i'm necessarily sick of the central coast although you know when when there were lockdowns i've went to every single place multiple times um but uh, yeah, I, I only realized fairly recently that I, that I hadn't actually um, gone that far out of the Central Coast. Like um, last year was the first time I went to the Blue Mountains. Oh, wow. Um, and I've only been there twice kind of thing. Wow. Um, which uh, blows some people's heads. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty much Central Coast and then um, I'm still trying to um, push out into like the uh, snowy mountains region um, really enjoy being up in the mountains there yeah yeah so in terms of planning and, and so forth what are you what, what are you thinking about when you when you're cooking up a, a, a plot to get out and, and do a shoot if if it's uh, if it's local uh, and let's say it's it's local to a, local in a seascape you know you, you'll be looking at um, tides uh positioning i use things like uh, photo pills to work out um direction of sun and all that kind of stuff uh and then whether or not there's high medium or low cloud um using stuff like cloud free night yep, um, yep. which is i i find it ironic that i use it because it's for uh, astronomers trying to work out whether or not there's going to be a clear sky <laughs> and i'm trying to work out whether or not it's going to be <laughs> whether or not there's going to be clouds yeah, um, I'm the same with clear outside. 
the same, yeah. same sort of theory. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, I, I do that. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's for seascapes and, and, and stuff like that. Um, sometimes there'll be a lot of planning involved. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, there's a, sh there's a shot that I'm looking at getting at the moment, which is, um, in a, uh, in a sea cave. Um, okay. Yeah. I've, and I've, I've tried to take it maybe six or seven times, Yeah. but it, it's one of those things where you need to make sure there's, um, you know, either clear sky or really good clouds. You need yep. to make sure that the direction of the sun is coming through the cave at a specific time. Um, yeah, for, yeah. for sunrise and you need to make sure you're not going to drown because yeah, of, of the tide kind yeah, of thing the tide's right otherwise you yeah uh, you, you can get really badly messed up yeah so i'll i'll set i'll set up you know dates um in advance where i can you know i work that out and go okay cool um if i can i'll go in this date yeah or, or if that, that kind of thing um and in terms of of, of stuff like Kosciuszko, i'll um I'll jump into things like Gaia GPS, which is mm -hmm. um, people use it for all sorts of things, um, but it's essentially really, really good topographic maps um, yeah. and uh, uh, imagery and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll jump into that, jump into uh, like Google Earth. Google Earth has a function where you can see where the, um, where the, like the shade is going to be at certain times during the day. Okay. So you can yep. you can work out, you know whether whether or not it's 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 going to be sh shady here or where the sun's going to be and right yeah I and yeah and I I love good old topographic maps as well it's really it's really cool you know bringing out the big map sitting down and going okay cool where's the stream how can I get there it's kind yeah. of the, what, what's the, the adventure aspect like? of it yeah. yeah am I going to be scrambling up, up a cliff or <laughs> yeah I, I I like knowing what I'm going to get myself into um, yeah. and it's it's not always that you know I'm going to go to a specific place and go okay I'm going to get the sunrise right here sometimes it'll be like that but yeah. I like um I like having options so then I can kind of wing it when I get there. Yeah, I right. haven't have in my head. You know, I can I can go 100 meters that way. There's a composition. I saw a rock there. Yeah, I can, right. Just just being just being prepared for um for anything just yeah. makes life a little easier. Yeah, I was going to ask if you go in with a concept of the shot that you're looking for beforehand, or do you? tend to let the landscape speak to you when you when you arrive on site you know if, particularly if you're, you're going somewhere new it, it really it really depends um you know sometimes i'll i'll, I'll do i'll do research you know if, if someone else has been there and, and they've got a shot from there i can go okay cool that's that's great not kind of comp stomping or anything like that but just sure. kind of getting a sense of of an area before you kind of get air dropped in there and and go oh crap that's that's not what i was expecting yeah. um kind of thing yeah so you just you just kind of you look you look around and you get an idea of of, of what an area is going to be like De definitely looking at the maps gives you the the best kind of you know if, if you're looking at it in 3d you know what the elevation is going to be like you know what you're getting yeah. yourself into yeah yeah makes makes all the difference when you when, when you can see or you can envisage what the terrain is before you get there. For sure. For sure. Um, you, you mentioned comp stomping, you know, how do you, how do you look for that unique composition, you know, particularly in some of the iconic locations where, you know, your angles might be limited, you know, I mean, a cave is a, a classic example, you know, the, the, there's the, um, the one up at uh, Crescent Head, I know, and the one down at Cathedral Rocks, there's literally, you know, aside from the tides and the sky and all those sorts of things, there's only so much you can do with the comp, you know. You, you're basically looking down a tunnel and, <laughs> you know, That's hopefully to a, yeah. to a feature just outside, you know. How, how, do you, how do you go about looking for something that's a, a little bit different and unique and in, in, not necessarily in a cave, but in those sorts of situations? Right. Um, a lot of it's, you know, not having the camera, a lot of it's just going to a place and, and, and just kind of 
sitting sitting there in it. If if it is a place that that is fairly popular, I, I do try not to look at too many pictures. I think um, Aaron Babnick's got a really good quote, and it was like, you know, if if you go to a place that's um, you know, it's the same composition over and over and over again, you've got the ghost of a thousand photographers kind of standing there yeah. with you. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a really hard, hard kind of thing to do. I generally, well, I, I, I think when I first started doing photography, um, I, I would go to places, um, you know, because I've seen them like Horsehead Rock and, and stuff like that as, as everyone oh, does, every, everyone does, um, yeah. to, you know, get that kind of trophy shot. And then I started realizing, well, it's, it's not really the, the shot that I want it's you know you you want to have a different you want to have a different take on it you don't yeah. have to but um you, you walk away with a, a, more of a sense of achievement and um ultimately a picture that reflects your take on it as opposed to um to to other people's mm-hmm. yeah so Andy, how do you know that you've nailed the shot um you just take lots of them <laughs> no um <laughs> no you <laughs> Yeah, well, it's 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 like, um, yeah, it's it's it, it kind of harks back to the to, to the whole composition thing. Like it's it's yeah. it's just a matter of um, it's 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 a feeling that you get, and once you've been doing it for a while, um, you know, you th- think of it like a um, you know, you, you're targeting something. You know, if you look yep. in the back of that viewfinder, you, you move it around, and you, you kind of get to a point, and you go, aha, cool, that feels good. Yeah, right. Um, and it's it's kind of when when you get that, then you're like, okay, cool. Well, I can work on that a little bit more. I can refine it. Um, and it's not always the case, you know. Sometimes um, you'll walk away and, and and you won't you won't get a shot at all. And I think that I think that's fine. I remember um, I had a friend when I, when I used to go camping. Um, yeah, when I was a teenager, I I, I had my you know. I, family's camera because I was like oh cool I need to go take pictures of the sunrise so you know we'd go and 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 we'd camp and I remember there like trying to take photos with this crappy little camera um and him saying well what's 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 the problem why can't you enjoy it I'm like oh I need to get a picture of the sunrise he's like well you don't have to you can just kind of sit in it and and enjoy the experience and kind of that's that's stuck with me you know there'll, there'll be times where I'll just go out even if I do have my camera and just en- enjoy it yeah, sure. kind of, kind of thing. Um, it's, 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 you know, yes, it is about photography, but it's also about connecting with nature and, and kind of having that, that nice feeling. Yeah. Um, looking through your portfolio, you've got, you know, quite varied styles. You've got some astro, you've got seascapes obviously um, and some mountain and forests and, and so forth. How would you describe your style? Do you have a style? Styles, styles, one of these 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 hard things. I, I thought for a long time that I did need to have a style or um, have a specific, you know, a specific look. Mm. Um, and I was so worried about that that I didn't actually end up pushing what I wanted to actually do with my images. So yeah. I kind of pushed that to the side. And gradually, as I've been kind of editing, you know, all the all those little decisions that you make from from when you take the image to to when you're editing it um, and and modifying all those things, um, it just kind of it it all it all kind of merges together. You you do end up having a style of sorts, um, mm-hmm. but it's just an accumulation of um, all those little tweaks and 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 thoughts that you've had over time so i i think i probably do um i i have bias towards certain things um and i think that um yeah that's that's the best way to 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 probably yeah to 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 describe it okay how how would you describe the the biases that you you have and and what are those things that you you sort of drawn to and I guess deeper than that, why are you drawn to those things? You know, 
Um, so I, I, I've, I've kind of shifted a little bit from, from, you know, doing seascapes, the bias there was, I enjoy the water and I'm near the sea. And then, you know, you've, you've got astro stuff and, and mountain stuff and, you know, that's yeah. great. That's adventure. And then I've started gravitating towards, um, like lots of forest work yep. and, and that's, you know, primarily out of a, um, not a hate for the sun, but uh, <laughs> wanting to go into a cool, dark place, um, oh, okay. just just naturally gravitating towards that. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, you, if you if you're in a forest, what what are you, what are the things that you think uh, uh, make up a, a good composition? You know, in in rainforest photography, because it's notoriously difficult with you know, jumbles of trees in the background and yeah, okay, you can get up close and personal with a particular tree or a bush or a fern or something. But, you know, how do you, how do you go out about sorting the, the, the shot from the, the lot that's, you know, that, that is in a rainforest? I, I, it, it probably comes down to two things. It comes down to um, exposure. Obviously the longer you are in, in, in a space like that, the more you kind of get used to, looking for stuff like that. Um, it's composition again, you're looking for things that are consistent. Um, light is, you know, light, light is key for, yeah. um, for stuff like that. Um, you know, so I'd, I'd try and go, you know, early in the morning or even, even the middle of day is fine. Middle of day is great. If you want to get like rays and stuff like that morning, um, and, and late afternoon, you know, you might get a little bit of fog and that adds a little bit of atmosphere. But in, in terms of, of looking for, just looking for, for stuff in the forest, it's, um, it's hard. It, 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 it's, it, it's, it's, it's really hard. Um, and more enough, more often than not, I walk away without, um, w without getting a shot. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know I start... walked around forests with my camera in the bag for hours and just not, not found what I'm looking for and not even really knowing what it is that I'm looking for, but just knowing that, no, that's not it. That's not it. Haven't found it yet. How do, yeah, how do you I, do I, with that? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a curiosity thing. Um, it's, it's, it's a, you know, what happens if I go over there? What if I move here? Sure. You know, and and being aware of of things like where where the light is, yeah. um, and and moss and and you know if if there's water elements as well, obviously knowing knowing where that is and just yeah being being familiar with an area I think is is really important when it comes to to forest stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, you know a, a lot of the, the the forest stuff that I was doing was was during lockdown um, last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was because every single day, um, I was, you know, getting my exercise and, and going and, um, taking, um, yeah, just taking photos, just walking around these forests. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess, uh, you know, talking about that, you know, I, I like to ask people about their local area and, you know, do you have favorite locations and, you know, can you describe the area for the listeners? Because they may, you know, I, I do actually have listeners uh, overseas. I, I noticed somebody from Estonia the other day, which surprised me a little bit. But, uh, oh, cool. Shout out to Estonia. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> the, the, the one person that's there. <laughs> but, um, that's great. yeah, I guess, you know, there's people obviously that aren't going to have a, a, a grasp of what the... <clears throat> Coast is like so. How how would you describe it first off, and then we can talk a little bit about where where you like to go there. Yeah, so the coast is uh, sandy beaches and inlets, and then if you go half an hour inwards, it's kind of um, foresty. There's lots of kind of national parks around here. You've got places like um, Budai um, yep. down south. Um, it's yeah, it's 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 weird. It's yeah, it's it's kind of yeah, yeah. It's it's hard to explain. It's it's kind of squished between the sea and forests. Yeah. Um, kind of thing. Um, 
Yeah. Well, it's, it's squished between sea, forest, and then a freeway that passes it <laughs> kind of thing. So it's, yeah. Um, yeah. It's one of those places that you need to intentionally go to. It's, it's in between obviously Newcastle and Sydney. So it's, um, it's one of those, yeah, there needs to be intention if you want to get here. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, um, I mean, I, I know it reasonably well. There's, it, it's got a reasonable urban population and there's, you know, Gosford and, you know, the various suburbs around that. And then there's, you know, little places around the beaches and so forth. But, um, I guess, uh, you know, for me, you you've kind of nailed it in that you've got a got this real variation between you know beach seascapes cliffs and you know all all the way into that hinterland of uh of forests and so forth and uh you know it i i, I think it's actually a, a great place for uh landscape photography there's uh, there's heaps to see and do around there for sure so what what are your favorite spots Without giving um, you, you, you we, <laughs> yes, specific <laughs> GPS coordinates. Here we yeah, go. I'm, I'm um, writing them down now. I remember someone. Uh, I saw a, a comment on on Reddit um, of a photographer, and um, he put GPS coordinates because someone actually asked for it, and it was wow. the coordinates for the middle of the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Just oh man, so good. Um, uh, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, ma mainly kind of, um, Avoca beach up, yep. up North, you've got places like, um, uh, Catherine Hill Bay, um, you got Budai, Budai's really nice. Um, and then, um, places like Summersby Falls, yeah, yeah. um, around that way, Summersby Falls and, and the, um, Brisbane water national park is, is huge. Yeah. Um, so around Giracool and, and stuff like that, it's, um, yeah, you, you just got to, yeah, there's, there's, it, it's a lot of effort to, to get to, to some of those places. Um, it's kind of yeah. half the half the fun, but yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah, definitely that. I, I definitely gra gravitate more towards the forests now than the mm -hmm. ocean because, you know, um, trees and stuff change. I feel like it's more dynamic than... Um, than the oceans you've you know if if you've lived here your entire life you kind of get sick of of um rocks and the ocean there's, there's <laughs> only so much you them. can do oh there's plenty of them yeah yeah no there's 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 tons of it so yeah yeah so what have, uh, i guess what's the most memorable experience you've had uh in your photography career uh i got a weird one <laughs> for it. So, so uh, I I went to Catherine Hill Bay. This would have been um, you know two two or three years ago, something like that. I was going to meet yeah. another photographer there at um, I think it was three thirty a.m. or something like that for the the Milky Way quarter rise. So you know, okay, yeah. Ca Catherine Hill Bay, um, you know, over the over the bay bay area. Um, so. We, we slept in the car so me me and my wife we um we parked in um what was what what is now residential area but was at the time just getting built up yeah so we um we th went there slept in the car and then um there were lights just mm -hmm. blaring lights um and sirens and uh cop pulled over because he thought that um we, you know, might've been robbers going into the houses or something like that. We just pulled oh, okay. over to the side of the road. Um, yeah. So that, that happened and we're like, okay, cool. That's, that's a bit spook, spooky, but that's, that's okay. We'll, um, uh, we'll, we'll get up in the Milky Way. That'll, that'll be fine. So, um, he was fine. No warnings, anything like that. He just wanted to know what we're doing. And then we, uh, uh, met up with uh, another photographer and went down to the Catherine Hill Bay itself. Yep. Um, and we started heading down to the bottom of the bay and we looked up to the car park and there was a car with the headlights on uh, and a guy standing naked in front of the headlights, um, just standing there. And we freaked out because we parked the car right next to that car. Yeah, no. um, yeah, so we, yeah, we went and we tried to take photos. 
Um, of him or of? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, yeah, no, no, it, it, it was Milky Way. It wasn't Moonrise, so it's all good. Um, yeah, so, yeah, we didn't get any shots and we didn't get any sleep and we ended up having to uh, call the cops again. And, what? yeah, that was that was so weird. That's just, I, I didn't get, I didn't get any shots and I didn't get any sleep. Um, but that, that definitely, that definitely stuck in my head. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. And then, and then we've, you know, I've, I've got other things like Kosciuszko going there just before the, the ski season, um, kind of thing, minus, minus eight, super cold. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, one of the group there got hypothermia another one got yeah. nosebleeds so yeah, yeah well I'm, I'm not sure if it was the the um the elevation or maybe just the cold wasn't expecting yeah. it kind of thing um he did uh yeah he was camping with an aldi tent so <laughs> yeah yeah no it was, it, was, it was pretty funny but it's 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 good things get interesting when when you go on trips um, yeah, and, and you do stuff like that um definitely f photography for me and, and and going out with the camera is a means to an end you know it's an excuse to go out there and um you know take shots yeah yeah and, and cool. see see the sunrise like go to go to all the the effort of hiking somewhere um yeah. just for just for something special yeah so I, I guess, you know, doing it as a hobby, are you doing it largely for relaxation or are you doing it because you you, you just love it or are there other other motivations in behind that? Um yeah, it, it is it is it is a hobby at the moment. Um, but you know, it is something that I would like to do. Um okay. but uh you know, if it's something that you'd like to do, obviously there's gonna be a long-term goal so i'm just kind of I'm, I'm building up to that i'm not kind of going gung-ho um yeah. into it you know as i said i've only been to blue mountains a couple of times so yeah. i need to i need to get out there and and take more pictures before yeah, i need can, a bigger portfolio <laughs> i need a bigger portfolio yeah yeah exactly um and i'm not complaining um you know obviously COVID and, and stuff like that has, has has mucked it up i've i've tried to go go to Tasmania five, six times in the last six months. So, um, yeah, it'll happen eventually. <laughs> travel anywhere has been a, a bit of a struggle, I think. And yeah, for sure. Occasionally people, I see people uh, getting out of the country and out of the state, but uh, not often. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's scary. Like, Oh, there's a plane window and you know, it's this amazing thing. Uh, um, yeah, no, it, it, it'd be it'd be nice to get out um, and kind of push. Uh, like the Central Coast is 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 great, but um, you know, the the great thing about landscape photography is it's it's all about the landscapes, and there's only so much you can fake or try and look for in a certain area. Um, yeah. You know, it's it does start to to dry up. Um, you know, even yeah even if you've kind of pushed as much as you can into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anything that uh, has changed your perspective after the uh, lockdowns and whatever about travel and travel for photography? Has it just made it more valuable to you or something that you you, you desire more or just something? Uh, that... Look, I, I just want to see more of Australia. Oh. Honestly, um, you know, everyone's you know in, in love with places like iceland and yeah i, I do yeah. i do you know that'd be cool to cool to check out um but you know honestly we've got thousand year old forests in tasmania that's a you know that's a three or three four hour flight um yeah. down, down south we've got new zealand we've got and and that's 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 pretty much me at the moment yeah, um, yeah. you know I'm just, I'm just keeping my eye out um yeah because i yeah, the rest of the world's good, but I'm I'm pretty sure Australia's got a lot to to, to give as well. Plenty to offer. Yeah, I, oh, I definitely tons. agree with that. Yeah. So so much so, the the wife and I have invested in a uh, motorhome, 
um, which we take delivery of later this year. So the plan is next yeah, year cool. to uh, take off and uh, try and try and do a lap. I don't, I don't know how far we'll get and how, how long it'll take. We haven't haven't got that far into planning yet, but uh, yeah, cool. Living the dream. That's great. Kind of, yeah. Look, looking forward to that. It should be uh, yeah. should be an interesting experience. <laughs> what sort of routine do you have uh, when you you know out in the field? Uh, you know, you've made your plans at home and you've got the idea for the shot. You've sort of hiked into the spot. Are you you know straight into it and you know pop the tripod up, put the camera on, and start shooting, or are you more introspective or more more searching around and trying to work the the, the compositions? Um, yeah, look, generally I'm looking for compositions, um, and I've gotten out of the habit of using a tripod most of the time. So yep. most of the stuff that I takes, um, handheld, yeah. um, even some of the seascapes, just because the tripod becomes one of those things that can get in the way of, of, of a nice shot and yeah, you know, yeah. your body's ability to, to shift into space is a lot better than, you know, Oh crap! I'm not going to get the shot because of the the, the the tripod's not in the way. Yeah, so I, I you know I generally get to a location and um you know I'll, I'll look around or I'll bring out um bring out my phone and 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 kind of use that. You know, it's, it's one of the not newer phones, but it's one of the ones with the ultra wide angle lens yeah. or whatever on it. So you know, if if you move into space, you can get an idea and you can quickly take a snapshot and you know you you've got a little catalog of of possible compositions. Um and it, it depends on it depends on what I'm doing. It depends on whether or not there's gonna be, you know, whether or not there's gonna be a sunrise. Um if there's a sunrise then there's obviously a time component to it. You're gonna yeah. need to to sort that out as as soon as possible. Whereas if it's something like a forest, you have the ability to to move around in space um, and just yeah look around, uh, take it all in and yeah f find compositions, find light, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So what about when you uh, you you've got your shots, you've nailed it, you've you know decided that uh, it's time to head home. When when you get there, are you uh, straight into editing or are you going to let them sit on the on the SD card for a little while and then, uh, or on the, on the hard drive and then, then get back to them later or do, uh, you know, dive into it. Um, I, I generally, you know, I, I generally get them off straight away cause I'm, I'm, you know, I'm generally excited, um, about it. Um, mostly because I'm, I'm like, crap, are they sh in sharp? Did I blow the highlights on, on that? that I got to go back. <laughs> well yeah that, that that that's the that's the thing yeah. um if the if there's rain and if it's somewhere on the central coast then you know, i might have to go back kind of mm. thing um uh but yeah no I, I generally you know i bring him into um a, a lightroom uh catalog and i mark i mark the ones that i think are going to be interesting um uh just you know ba based off you know obviously if you do it straight away straight away you've still got that that um you know the thoughts that you had when you were taking that photo there yeah. so you know you've got the compositions and stuff that you think would work so i i you know i go through i mark all the ones that i want um and then then i walk away got i just it. don't i don't i don't touch it i don't i just I, I, I don't i don't do anything like that um and and generally i'll i'll you know i'll, I'll take a while on on images um and you know obviously seeing things with with a fresh perspective um kind of helps you helps you refine um what you want um a, yeah. a little bit a little bit more um and yeah you, you you just i i visit things over and over over again like there there are shots that are you know months old that i haven't kind of touched and i think it's i think it's good walking away because mm. i find you know f f for me personally um my brain's kind of editing it in the back of my head yeah um you know you, you kind of passively passively working on a shot even though you you haven't touched it so you know when you go back in you've got you've got more ideas and you've you've got kind of yeah you, you've got a new take on it uh, generally yeah, yeah. 
So when, when you're into the processing, what, what sorts of things are you doing? And with, again, without giving away too many trade secrets <laughs> and whatever, but, you know, I mean, people are always interested in, you know, are you, you know, just doing minor adjustments or are you getting diving into, you know, multiple layers and, you know, in between, is it, or is it Lightroom exclusively or Lightroom Photoshop or, you know, how do you, how do what, what's your workflow look like, I guess? Yeah. So generally, uh, bring into Lightroom, obviously flag the ones that I want when I get them work out whether or not, you know, there's going to be a focus stack or something like that. Um, make slight adjustments to it and then export them into, um, Photoshop. And then most of the stuff that I do is within camera raw. Um, but I also do work with a lot of, of, of layers as well. Um, I remember, what was it? There was a forest shot and I had about 65 layers or something like that. And that, that's just, you know, slight, slight adjustments. Yeah. It like, I've, I've given up on saving things as, um, Photoshop documents. I save them as I think they're PSBs or something like that. Um, which, you know, like, 10 gigs a pop or something like that. Yeah, it's, it. it's pretty ridiculous. Um, but yeah, mo most of it, most of it, lots of little layers. Cause you know, as I said before, like I go back in and I keep refining it. Um, and having those layers is, is really good. Cause you know, um, although camera raw is, is, is good, is good for some things. If, if I need to, um, if I need to clone stuff, obviously I want that on a separate layer just in case I want to pull back on it. And having those layers gives me the flexibility to, um, work out what I want to get, or, you know, it might, uh, what's an example. So, you know, you might, you might get down the line and go, crap, I didn't, um, I didn't blend those, you know, maybe like there's the edge of a fern or something like that. That's yeah, blurry right. because the, the stacking was, was messed up. Yeah. You know, I can, I can go back to that specific one and, and, and mask it. And because of, there's all adjustment layers, all I'm doing is, um, yeah, I'm I'm just, I'm I'm not working kind of destructively. Yeah, right. But there there, there are other times that I, that I do work destructively, and I just I just wing it. And yeah. it's not that I don't, I don't care that it's destructive. It's that um you know sometimes you get into that headspace and you just want to kind of push through. Um, yeah. You know, right. some sometimes I'll do like a rough edit of of an image when I get it first you know, just to see whether or not it's going to work. Mm -hmm. um, and I might use that as reference or something later on when I go back in and I start from scratch. Yeah, right. So are you shooting, does, uh, say that again, does your shooting influence your editing style or does your editing style influence you, your shooting style or neither and, you know, it, it, it's something uh, that's sort of grown organically on, on both sides? I think it's definitely both sides, but I, I find I find it's always backwards because um, obviously um, when you're editing, you kick yourself if you get something wrong, yeah. um, you know, so I, I always, you know, make sure that I, you know, you take multiple shots, you know, underexpose, overexpose, all this kind of stuff. So I've got yeah. the, um, the utility to modify um, the shots and stuff like that once I do get them. In, yeah, into right. processing because otherwise you know yeah uh, other, otherwise you just kind of yeah i've made the mistake of thinking that you know what i've got's really really good and then bringing it into photoshop and going oh crap i've, I've blown the highlights you know yeah, yeah, yeah. darks you can kind of hide to a certain extent but highlights yeah. are pretty hard to to yeah. fix <laughs> and uh, depending on the camera and you know the, the 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 lighting conditions you can also recover uh darks a little bit better than you can your, your highlights but as you say when, once the highlights are blown they're blown yeah for sure so i've got a i've got a um nikon d610 which i think's mm. 2013 2014 or something like that yeah, like right. it's it's fairly old it's not amazing or anything like that so i i do feel like i need to overcompensate when it comes to um making sure i've got everything that i need yeah yeah so shoot, shooting handheld obviously um that 
you know, gives you flexibility, but I guess in terms of long exposure and so forth, that has its limitations. Are you shooting without filters most of the time or are you just trying to do it, use, you know, with your uh, exposure triangle to, to control the, those longer exposures? Generally, you can, you can get away with um, a lot more than you think you can, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So like for seascape stuff, um, yeah, I, I think I, I, I can get just under a second generally, okay. but it, it, it depends. It depends on what you're going to do. You know what I mean? It depends whether or not you're going to maybe crouch down and brace with, with the camera on your, on your knee yeah, or whether right. or not you're going to hold your breath and, and, and take the shot then. Yeah. And right. in terms of, um, or if there's a handy rock, you can rest it on or something like that. Yeah. 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 It's, it's generally like most of it's a, a lot of kind of bracing, um, because you know, when I do seascapes, I, I do, I don't enjoy getting wet, but they're the best kind of shots. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So if you, if you're kind of in there, whereas, you know, if you get a tripod, you know, you knock that over and it's just, you trip and, and it's horrible. Um, in terms of like forest stuff, um, same, same, same kind of thing. Um, yeah. I, I generally have a CPL on like a circular polarized yep. filter yeah. all the time. That makes life a little bit easier. Um, makes it look a lot better um yeah so yeah it's it's just a, it's just a matter of knowing you know what your limitations are in terms of um being able to shoot uh and and yeah having an understanding of the the exposure triangle and knowing what you can get get away with you, yeah. you know you, you get um yeah you, you get punished if you get it wrong but if you get it right you generally get um you know you get a composition that you're ha happier with yeah right right yeah. yeah i guess knowing your gear as well makes a big difference as you know a hundred percent yeah it, it's always uh you know a lot easier once you you know if, if you're unfamiliar with the gear it's uh it's much harder to 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 get that accuracy i guess in uh in terms of particularly handheld shooting um i guess move, moving on to uh some, some of the why do you print your work or are you just exclusively releasing it on, on online um yeah I've, I've i've printed i printed some stuff um and and that's been that's been an interesting process i, I feel like printing is is the end game for um for a lot of photography um stuff because yeah. obviously you know you post it on instagram or something like that and it's um you know it's 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 very short lived, whereas you know, yeah, you get you get image. daily dopamine hit, I guess. You know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You do. That's not necessarily. Yeah, it's less helpful than if someone pays you to do uh, do a, do a print. I, I like the process of, of printing, um, which is yeah, it, it's good. I've, I've I've printed a little bit. Um, it'd be nice to print more, but um, I'm 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 happy. I'm happy building up a portfolio and knowing, knowing that I have the ability to print stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, it's yeah. And uh, yeah, if you, if you, if you're going to print as well, you, you're better off printing as big as you can. Yeah, um, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you, do you print your own or do you use a, a, a print service? Uh, no, I generally, yeah, I, I generally use a print service. Yeah, um, yeah. and it, it it really yeah it really depends i think on the on the coast here we've got uh deluxe and then we've yeah. got uh created for life they're they're the two kind of really 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 good ones and yeah they're they're great yeah yeah how important is it to have a relationship with those guys in terms of you know understanding the, the inputs and outputs and everything and uh, you know uh, if you don't mind me asking how much work do they put into that translation of the the screen image into the into the print yeah that they they um they put in a lot i think it's glenn who runs the credit for life he um he took me through um through the the, the back end there for 
for a little tour, which is really cool. Um, but you know, that they've got, you know, color accurate monitors, um, they, they modify it. They, they do all their, um, their printing obviously in house and they can make sure that it's, that it's all kind of good. Um, and I think it's just, it's, it's good to know, you know, from the photographer's side, like it, it's, it's really good to, it's, it's really good to have the relationship. And I think it's really good to, to kind of know your stuff when it comes to printing, not even printing, but just like, um, just understanding color profiles and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. You know, you know, <laughs> like, um, and, and that kind of, that, that helps in the, the other way as well. Like if you, you know, if you're editing in Adobe RGB as opposed to sRGB and stuff like that, you're, you're dealing with more colors, which is great because you have more flexibility, yep. um, w within that, which means, you know, your image is going to look better. You have a better understanding of, you know, you have more colors, you have, you have more palettes to kind of play with, um, yeah. And it, it helps the output as well in terms of printing and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. So what do you do if you ever hit a creative wall? Have you, have you hit a creative wall? So many times. <laughs> so, so many times. I think we all have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I keep, I'm, I'm bouncing into walls all over the place. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's one of those it's one of those hard things where you you need to kind of um, need to kind of work walk away. I, I think a, a lot of it um, for for me stems from you know overstimulation and exposure to stuff like um, social media. If you're looking at Instagram, Twitter, all that kind of stuff every single day, um, you kind of get into the into the habit loop, and you just um, yeah it's 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 not it's not good for you both creatively and 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 physically and mentally kind of thing so i just try to stick away from that and you know if i get sick of the photography kind side of things i, I still enjoy nature i'll go out there and i'll go for a surf and yeah. you know and i think you know you, you've got you've got two aspects um of it as well you know you've got the you know you're hitting a wall and you don't kind of feel like you want to um want to kind of do it anymore and then you've also got the the um you know the the side that kind of says I, i'm not good enough i'm looking at all these other 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 people you know why should comparison i comparison against somebody kind of, else's portfolio yeah and and that's that's kind of one of the the, the most destructive things that you can have um, creatively it's 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 a hard kind of balance to make between being inspired and mm -hmm. being crushed because you know s someone's kind of better than you at stuff but you, you, i don't know a, a lot of it's winging it's all swings and roundabouts you, you end up kind of coming to a place where it, it's it's okay but understanding those markers you know f f for me with, with with um social media and stuff like that just trying to trying to flag that okay cool uh that's not quite working for me i'm i'm not yeah. feeling good i don't really want to do that and and just kind of stepping away it's honestly social media detox is the best thing you can do yeah um, agree with that just <laughs> just i spend like, way too much time on it myself yeah, but, you know look it's it's going to be there it's going to be there when you come back exactly exactly nothing's nothing's going to be yeah i mean one 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 of the pieces of advice i've given to you know, my uh, girls has been, you know, don't compare yourself to somebody else's highlight reel because what you're not seeing is their blooper reel. And what you're also not seeing is the fact that they might be at, you know, six, seven years experience and you may only have three or four. And the difference between that three and four and six or seven is a massive experience you know uh amount of experience in not only you know putting your portfolio together or putting together your, your your work but also in managing your social media profile and so forth you know yeah for sure for sure and I, I think a lot of people sort of don't uh don't think of it that way and they just sort of get caught up in that um that comparison against uh 
people that might be further along in their journey than than you might be and everybody's yeah. where they where they are in their their own personal journeys and I, I think a much better way of looking at it is compare yourself to where you were three or four years ago yeah I, I always like the saying that's um you know if you're not not embarrassed by your past self then you haven't grown that's it kind of yeah. thing <laughs> um so yeah look if if you're you know embarrassed by your you know hdr phase or like your your orb <laughs> phase or you know what it whatever is is yeah. is in there then um yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's that's fine. That's, that's saturation the best way to look at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, saturation equals good, therefore one hundred percent, and that's a good feature. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess you, you mentioned you know putting together the portfolio. How important is it for photographers to put themselves out there though to help build you know a, around their portfolios and how. Do you see social media? You know, it's a dichotomy that you know you've you've got to be out there if you want to build a career out of it. But if you know you're not out, you know that can also be unhealthy. The more time you you spend in there, you know, it's yeah, it's it, it is it is definitely definitely a balance. I I always I always think um you know when it when it comes to to getting yourself out there, um. Okay, let, let, let's say you push all your work into to something like Instagram or, or Twitter or something like that. Um, yep. You know, you, you're putting yourself in a place where um, someone else is in control of 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 your platform, essentially. So yep. you know, uh, Instagram could change, algorithm could change, or like your account could get banned or something like that, and all that effort that you put into it is just poof gone. Yeah. Um, I prefer to push uh, effort into stuff like uh, my website and uh, YouTube and, and and stuff like that because I'm finding at the moment that that's um, I, I, it, it feels a lot better for me. I, I feel like I'm not kind of you know shoveling into this endless well of you know you know yeah it, it just it just it, it feels it feels a lot better. Social media is one of those, um, yeah. It's 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 a frustrating it's a frustrating thing, um, but you know I think for photographers uh, dealing with you know something like your own website, you'll you'll get a lot more worth and and, and value out of it, um, and you won't have to crop your pictures or deal with weird colors because it got compressed in a certain way and, and, and stuff like that. But like, I, I think, I think it, it is good to share your, share your work. It's, it's one of those um, confronting things because, you know, you, you want to obviously grow creatively uh, and in order, order to do that, um, you know, it's, it's good to kind of like finish something and get rid of it, um, you know, kind of get it out of your head and, and being able to post it on like Instagram or, or wherever uh, is, is a good way of kind of like locking that, locking that picture away it's like yep that's it that 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 that's done um but then you've got the other side which is you know um growing in terms of um you know obviously building your own portfolio and stuff like that um you're only gonna get uh you're yeah you're, you're only really gonna get positive comments on something like instagram it's not going to be a creative critique and you don't want to create a critique from a, an Instagram post or anything like that. So I think, I think, I think in terms of growing, utilizing, um, you know, um, gr groups um, of, of photographers, whether that be friends or um, I'm part of a of a Discord, kind of helps surround you in that in in that that bubble. It kind of helps insulate you from from the the kind of the dopamine rush that is um, that is social media. And I think alternative, like I think, I think in the end you'll kind of, you'll, you'll find it, it works a lot better and you, and you move a lot further um, yeah. because you, you're not as worried um, about that kind of side of things. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So what, what sort of communities have you found useful, you know, in terms of getting that, uh, you know, getting that constructive feedback about uh, about your portfolio and work. 
Yeah. Um, so uh, probably probably the, the the first one that I jumped onto was the um, uh, Nature Photography Network. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, that was really good. You know, it's it's like a two dollar a month thing that you pay and you get access to a critique um, kind of um, forum, which is great. The problem with critiques though, is they're only really helpful if the people who are uh, critiquing you are kind of at your level or a little bit better. Yeah. And that's, that, that's not me kind of pushing myself out there or anything like that. But you find after a while you kind of grow, you kind of grow out of that. So, you know, I went from that and then um, there's a photographer in Canada called Tristan Todd and he created yep. uh, the Landscape Photographers Worldwide Discord. Mm-hmm. It's about 800. Yeah, actually, no, there's nearly a thousand at this point um, members on it. And there's a critiques channel in there and there's a whole bunch of good photographers in there. Yeah, and yeah. it just it's so scary posting stuff in there <laughs> and getting <laughs> and, and getting crit- critique but I, but but i think it's good because it's a, it's a safe space um yeah, yeah. it's a, it's but a safe space for me I, I think the important thing isn't so much uh i mean yes the experience and their their skill and photography and everything is really important definitely but i i for me i think the skill that they really need to have is the skill of actually imparting create a, a, a constructive feedback in an appropriate way you know so that they're not pulling apart just the bits which are wrong but they're also sort of saying okay well rather than do x why why not try y as a as an alternative and they're actually you know giving much more encouragement as opposed to you know just sort of ripping ripping your uh, your, your pieces to put yeah you know, for sure it's it's kind of it's kind of what 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 you really want is you you don't necessarily want to critique on your picture you want to change in your perspective correct yeah of of you know how you how you how you do see things mm. um and that's yeah that's 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 one of the good things about kind of being in a community like that you get all sorts of perspectives and yeah. you know yeah. people have different pros in terms of you know what they're good at yeah. I think it, it, it also helps you as a you know photographer and as a, as a person grow a little bit in terms of taking that critique and saying okay well it's not about you personally you know yes it might be about some of the choices you made in either composition or editing or whatever you know but it's not about you it's about and if it, if it's centered around the work then it can be a, a really positive experience as you said you know you get to you get to look at things from through a different lens and and, and get a different perspective on, uh, you know, how somebody else might, uh, you know, react to your work. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's definitely, it's, it's definitely, you know, get, get, getting, getting critique from other people is more important than, you know, going and looking at like a YouTube tutorial or something like that. Cause ultimately when you go look at the YouTube tutorial and go back to your picture, it's still your perspective. Um, exactly. Not that your perspective is necessarily bad, but you're just getting more brains in there to, to kind of work yeah. on it. Um, and I find, yeah, that, that definitely helps, helps, helps you grow uh, creatively a lot better, a lot faster yeah. as well. Totally. Yeah. So what's your, your favorite thing about being a photographer? Uh, I, I find it's, it's, it's really cool being in a position where you can, um, you know, you, you can point at one specific thing um, that, you know, people wouldn't necessarily notice and say, hey, this is why it's special. Yeah. Here, here, look at, look at this, um, this very specific thing. Um, yeah, I, 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 I find that great. People find it crazy when i'm driving a car and i go oh look at the cloud that <laughs> kind of stuff um yeah. they're just they're just like oh weirdo um yeah but, that, that, that's my wife <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's just like oh like yeah the the, the tide's gonna be really good yeah. or like yeah but it's, it's, it's sunset it's, tonight yeah. <laughs> yeah like yeah it, it, it is it is cool though because you can you know you can 
you know, it, it gives you, you know, especially with landscape photography, it gives you the ability to um, almost future read. Yeah, <laughs> like, read condition. I, I think I know what this specific place is going to be looking like at this specific time. Yeah, right. Um, and with sunrises and stuff like that, it's really cool being able to go, okay, cool. Uh, let's get up for the sunrise tomorrow um, because I know it's going to be really, really good as opposed to sleeping in and, yeah. you know, obviously it's getting all those pictures. Of people, hey, check that. out the sunrise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Check out the sunrise this morning that you missed. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> what's, what's the least favorite thing? Uh, uh, probably, uh, probably leeches. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like gen genuinely, genuinely though, like the, the, the effort, uh, that you kind of go to, 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 to get to, to some of the places, um, is yeah, it's, 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 it's great and awesome and stuff like that, but it's, it's also a pain in the butt. Um, but, but that's okay. That's, you know, you've got photography, you know, at the end of the tunnel to, to kind of to look forward to it's that, that kind of North, North star it's, it's, yeah, you just, you, you, you go through it, but yeah, probably probably that and you know you when you walk away with a crap shot it it's it's frustrating sometimes yeah definitely definitely <laughs> but but that's but that's that's half the fun like being able to you know if if there was an amazing sunrise every single morning you'd kind of get sick of it yeah there wouldn't be anything the, unique about it yeah, but like the the the, the effort that you take to, to going to a place over and over and over again, and you know if that ends up being rewarding, um, you know if you if you end up getting getting a shot that you wanted, that that that's it's just compounded. It's 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 so much better. Yeah, sure. So what tips have you got for somebody that's uh, just starting out in landscape photography? Um, try and expose yourself to as as much as possible. Um, I, I found one of the best things um, that kind of helped me when I first started was obviously just getting out there as much as I can, um, looking at other people's work, but looking at other people's work and trying to work out why you like it mm -hmm. um, is, is one of the best things um, that you can do. I, I kind of, I still do that now uh, with pictures. It kind of helps with, with the, the editing side of things, understanding that, um, you know, you're not necessarily just going to take a shot and it's going to look amazing. <laughs> Obviously understanding, you know, you got JPEG, you got raw, please shoot raw. Um, and yeah, just, just, just having, just having an overview of how things work and, and knowing how your camera works is, yeah, is sure. one of the most important things. Being able to, you know, quickly change things on the fly is, is, is super important and, and have fun. Like just be curious and, and go out there and, you know, if, if you know, if you don't, I, I think when you first start photography, like you might like, you know, you might gravitate towards landscape stuff, but don't let that limit you just go and, and take photos and you'll learn, you'll learn a lot more from just being curious and, and doing whatever than you will from yeah. just trying to focus on one thing. No, that's great advice. Thanks for that. Who are the particular who are the particular photographers that are catching your eye at the moment? And there's is there anyone that you think I should be talking to on the podcast? Yeah, for sure. I've got I've got two people that I reckon you should get. Uh, I've got three actually. So uh He Su Chung, I think someone's yep. mentioned him before. Just amazing, just puts a stupid amount of effort into things and um, probably doesn't get much sleep. Um, yeah, I've, got... I've asked him a, a couple of times. He's uh, he's um, says, says he's really shy. So I'll, I'm, yeah. I'm hoping I'm hoping he listens to this and uh, eventually uh, relents and comes on. <laughs> One day, if if enough people say it, it'll it'll that's it'll it. Good. It'll happen. We'll um, just manifest it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, and, and the others, I reckon, uh, Luke Hazard, 
He's from okay, um, yeah. the Kosciuszko snowy, snowy, snowy mountain region. He's got so many nice pictures from that area. Um, and the stuff that's kind of blowing my mind at the moment is he's like at the end of the snow season, he started getting um, uh, like snow ice caves. Okay, wow. Waterfalls coming out, that kind of stuff. Just things sure. that you couldn't even imagine was in Australia. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, just, just so, so good. And then the other one is uh, Daniel Clark. He's from yeah. he's from Tasmania. Um, he, I think he's only really been posting since um, mid last year or something like that. But he's just absolutely incredible. Some of the work that he's got is great, um, and he's really really pro conservation when it comes to stuff like that because obviously there's a lot of issues in terms of you know forestry and delogging and national parks getting ripped up um down yeah, yeah. there in tassie um yeah. so i reckon he'd be really good to talk to fantastic thank you for that all right well i've got one more question for you and uh for a lot of people it's the most important one do you like pineapple on pizza Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a definitive. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's my, it's, yeah, it's, it's my favorite kind of pizza. Um, and I don't know, it's only weird people wouldn't like um, pineapple and pizza. So, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really good. I know it's, I know it's a fruit, but so what? Fruit on pizza is fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, tomato is a fruit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, exactly. You couldn't couldn't have pizza without tomato. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's a it's a hidden hidden thing. Fair enough. All right. Well, thanks uh, so much, Dale. It's been wonderful uh, catching up with you and um, learning a lot more about you and what you do. Where can people find your work? Uh, best bet is um, I'm at Dale G Photo on Instagram and Twitter and um, at dalegphoto.com is my uh, website so yeah pretty much search that and you'll you'll get there all right well thanks again uh dale it, uh, it's been wonderful thanks for listening to landscape photography world i hope you enjoyed the show and keep listening because i'll be joined by some great guests in upcoming episodes you can find my work in this podcast grantswinburnphotography.com i'm also on instagram twitter facebook and youtube i'm grant swinburne hope to see you out shooting soon mm-hmm.